We'll spin up the easiest challenge. So um, what it's going to do now is it's going to create a Kubernetes cluster for us. So start from scratch. Good day, and thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, my name is Daniel Finneran. I'm a principal community advocate at iSurveillance, um, predominantly focused in the networking space, uh, mainly focused around Cilium. And um, this talk today is all around uh, a project that we put together, uh, an event that we put together, a capture the flag event um, that we did at CiliumCon and KubeCon. So this talk is how we created, used, and destroyed over 1,200 Kubernetes clusters in uh, 24 hours on a single Equinix metal server. Um, and let's kick things off. So um, how did this all come about? What was the plan? Well, um, as you know, ever in the advocacy space, uh, KubeCon and CiliumCon was lo looming. Uh, the advocacy teams were all getting together and working on materials and ideas and, and coming up with ideas really how we could engage the community. Aside from the obvious sessions that we, we had, round tables and panel discussions, we wanted to come up with something a bit more unique, something that was going to be interactive, uh, give people a learning experience and get Kubernetes and Cilium uh, into people's hands. So. You know, we sat around, we looked at the usual suspects that we could kind of put together in order to do this, so workshops and labs, etc. Um, we already have a very large catalogue of amazing labs, so uh, it seemed a, a bit silly to, you know, kind of recreate the same experience. And as often as these things are, um, time being a, a factor that was uh, weighing up against us, we didn't really have an opportunity to kind of get an instructor-led course designed, implemented, and put together uh, in the available time. Um, so uh, what could we do really that was going to be quick and easy that people could kind of hop into, hop out of, uh, join in and be part of the day through CiliumCon and KubeCon? Uh, we decided to investigate really if there is a way that we could create a lot of small Kubernetes challenges with a prize for, for solving the problem. Um, and this was kind of the beginning of the, the Capture the Flag event. So, uh, capture the flag. I have to keep moving myself around here. Capture the flag. Um, the game was kind of quite simple. Um, you're effectively given a broken Kubernetes cluster to fix. The goal, uh, two goals really, but the main goal uh, for us is you get a Kubernetes cluster, you get to learn about how Kubernetes kind of works, and you get to play with Cilium and the extended Cilium tooling and use its superpowers in order to help you solve the problem of the broken Kubernetes cluster. Um, we kind of wanted to put some kind of rules and limits around this. So uh, in the game, you have a time limit of one whole hour to fix at least one of the clusters. Um, but each of the challenges, each of the capture the flag challenges also has its own time limit. So there's about 15, 16 different challenges. Each challenge has its own um, its own time limit to basically kind of you know make it easier or harder in order to fix that particular broken cluster issue, um, and then the overall game has a, a full limit of a time. To make it even uh, to make it even harder, I suppose, um, you can fix the cluster, or when you fix the cluster, you can access the prize page. However, not every broken cluster will lead you to the prize. So what that means is that you know whilst there are sixteen clusters, not all of them will actually get you access to the to the golden ticket um, that, that people were hunting for in the capture flag environment. So um, initial problems, um, Kubernetes, 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 Kubernetes. Yeah, we wanted to make it super easy and super quick for people to be able to spin up Kubernetes clusters and, and get access to them and things like that. Um, even today, you know, Kubernetes has been around for quite some time now. People still find it a lot of trouble to get Kubernetes actually up and running. And it's also usually not a very particular quick thing to actually get Kubernetes up and running. Um, you know, in some cloud instances, it still is upwards of 10 minutes before your cluster uh, is ready for use. And that simply is not going to work in the time slot uh, environment that we actually had. Um, so, you know, kind of the initial problems, um, you know, there's lots of distri different distributions of um, 
of Kubernetes. Some of them have requirements on cluster API to install or have a vendor specific installer. Some have crazy requirements on the actual base infrastructure to actually run on. So multiples of machines. Um, some have requirements on enterprise licensing, specific underlying networking, or other self-imposed res imposed restrictions. As I've mentioned, um, basic infrastructure requirements uh, are an issue. Time to deploy. We wanted to get this into people's hands as quickly as possible, or as uh, Mark Coleman once said, we wanted the mean time to dopamine um, to be as short as possible. Um, and also price as well. So spinning up Kubernetes clusters is, is not often a cheap uh, thing to do. So there's a lot of variables to kind of take into consideration here. We wanted to get like these quick challenges into people's hands. Um, we wanted to have as low re reduction of, of uh, overheads as possible. We wanted to do it quickly. We wanted it to be fast. We wanted it to, you know, kind of utilize as, as limited resources as actually possible. So, um, you know, this was a, a community-led, but uh, largely to a degree, a bit of a solo effort. Um, we didn't have a lot of resources or time. Um, there are existing kind of lab environments out there. However, they are often quite expensive, can be slow, or to a certain degree can be restrictive in the sorts of things that you can actually run within them. Um, and we really needed something that had a minimal footprint. Um, ideally, wouldn't require virtualization or licensed hypervisors and things like that. Um, and we wanted a lot of flexibility to match the kind of requirements. So, uh, open source. Ho you know, ho hopefully you've come across this as you, in, in your um, experiences. But open source uh, to the rescue here. Um, Docker had an open source project called Play with Docker, um, which initially looked like it was going to be a perfect fit. Uh, Play with Docker is a project that came out around 2016 or so, and it basically allows you to run a, a virtual, well, not virtual, uh, a containerized Docker environment within within Docker. So this was kind of the basis for, for the idea as such. We needed to make kind of a lot of changes for it to actually work for what we were needed needed to do with it. Um, it wanted it to support modern Kubernetes. It needed to uh, enable eBPF in order for Cilium to actually work. C groups V2 were actually required for modern Kubernetes, and it, you know, kind of uh, for running Docker in Docker, it was fine. But for running modern Kubernetes in Docker, there are a few things that we kind of needed to add to it. So, uh, yeah, after rolling up my sleeves and playing the A team theme. Um, we managed to cobble together a, a working environment um, that would allow us to spin up Kubernetes clusters uh, very quickly with Cilium under the hood. And then we could inject kind of a broken config and, and leave it then for people to actually kind of uh, fix those clusters. To which that point, you know, the, the CTF environment uh, at least um, was in a position where things would actually run and the hive.cloud was, was kind of up and running. So how does this all actually look under the covers? So let me move myself around again. Um, so C3 small um, from, from Equinix Metal, uh, running Ubuntu, running uh, the Docker engine. And uh, what would happen is um, you would log into the hive.cloud from your, from your laptop or from your iPhone or other compute device. Um, and it will spin up an environment for you uh, which looks either like this, and we'll do a live demo. Um, you can either connect to it through the web browser, or you can SSH directly into it and, and start playing the actual game. So what's actually ha happening under the covers here is um, when you spin up and create a new environment, it will create an entirely new uh, Docker network. And then using the K3D project from uh, Susi Rancher, it will spin up then three more Docker containers, each with a Kubernetes node inside it. And this is incredibly quick. It'll take 20 seconds or so for actually get you a three node Kubernetes cluster up and running. So within 20 seconds or so, we have our Kubernetes cluster up and running, at which point then we will inject our evil YAML, um, which is a, a configuration of, of an application inside the, the API server. At which point then um, the end user can basically use kubectl to interact with the API server to try and work out what's broken. And hopefully if they fix things correctly, 
um, they will get access to, to the prize. Now, as I say, it's not always the case that that cluster will actually lead them to the prize, but um, that's that's kind of the that's the that's the challenge as such. So that's the architecture. Uh, what we'll actually do now is we will connect to the environment, and we will we'll quickly go through uh, what it looks like. So this is the Hive Cloud, and uh, I know this is only a 15-minute um, session, but we're actually going to spin up a, a Kubernetes cluster and fix it now. So would you like to play a game? Uh, We'll spin up the easiest challenge. So um, what it's going to do now is it's going to create a Kubernetes cluster for us. So start from scratch. Um, it's going to deploy uh, a Docker network. It will deploy uh, a number of uh, Docker containers, each of those being the control plane and two workers. So we can see there in about 12 seconds or so, actually, um, we have a Kubernetes cluster that's actually up and running, a three node Kubernetes cluster. Um, we then modify that Kubernetes cluster so that eBPF is enabled and C groups V2 are enabled. And then finally, what we're going to be doing is two things. We're going to be installing uh, the Cilium CNI, and then we're going to be nefariously breaking that Kubernetes cluster um, so that the applications are deployed, but they, they won't actually work. And what an end user would need to do um, is effectively click this solve the hive quiz when they believe that they've actually fixed the, the problem. So. If we actually have a look at this, and I'm actually going to give you the answer to this particular challenge, but um, if we do get service, well, we can also see here we have 2 minutes and 48 seconds left. Uh, we have three services, and uh, I'll do this quite quickly. Um, we can see here that the back-end service has no endpoint, so it's not actually got any pods sitting underneath it. So if we quickly edit the service, um, we can see here that the the selector, um, someone has accidentally put the selector as wrong. It should be back end. So we've now edited that service. If we actually look at the endpoints for the back end, we can now see that there are two pods sitting underneath this back end. And if we quick click the solve the hive quiz, we should now get access to um, what we would either get access to the golden ticket or we would get access to the gallery of, of one of the the ebpf ebs so we can see here that this challenge whilst we successfully completed it this wasn't the correct challenge so we've not actually gotten our, our golden ticket so that is the capture the flag platform um as i say it's uh, we've worked incredibly hard on it being able to get these clusters into your hands in around 40 seconds or so that's a fully stood up brand new cluster um, with uh, an application deployed, the challenge in there, um, it will it will put a README file down, giving some clues, areas for you to actually look on. Um, you can we can deploy Hubble and we can use Tetragon as well to actually get visibility into the architecture of things. Um, we can SSH into these clusters and uh, and various other things. When the time expires, uh, which I force that on us, it will then delete that cluster and everything is all tidied up and, and cleaned away. So that's the Capture the Flag platform. Um, let's head back to the session. So that's what it actually looked like. So on the day um, at CiliumCon, uh, some numbers, so yeah, as I say, 20 seconds to stand a, K a Kubernetes cluster up, about 50 seconds to have the CNI and the broken application um, actually applied. We hit a number of Docker hub limits whilst we were doing this because we were deploying that many clusters. So we had, we basically put an internal registry inside the, the the instance, so it basically just pulls locally. So there's barely any network access once we've actually moved those containers uh, images onto the to the node itself. So on the day, uh, the plan was actually to move from that C3 small that had actually built the entire environment onto onto a large in order to handle you know, kind of the workload. Uh, however, due to a mistake on my part, the, the platform was actually left on a small. Um, it was announced at the beginning of CiliumCon, and within two hours, the platform had created over 200 three-node Kubernetes clusters with broken configurations on them. And by the end of the day, we'd hit 750 clusters. So that's 2,250 containerized Kubernetes node. And the small stood up rock solid through it all, which is, is pretty amazing. We can see here, here are the graphs of um, 
of it being hit. And luckily, because of the way that it worked, shared memory, and us not having to virtualize every full environment, we actually managed to get incredibly uh, incredible density for everything that was actually running on that node itself. So the wrap up. Um, a single small physical server uh, allowed for massive density. Um, the ease of the Equinix Metal APIs meant that we could kind of deploy this super fast and simple. So for scaling, if we'd have actually needed it, um, which we were lucky, luckily we didn't. Um, you know, the direct access to the hardware uh, provided us, you know, kind of that fantastic performance and incredible, uh, incredible capacity. And, you know, having that uh, multi-layered containers meant minuscule, if any kind of overhead for the capture the flag Kubernetes node instances. So uh, that is the capture the flag uh, project or uh, experience that we put together for for CiliumCon and for KubeCon. Um, we've been running it continuously since and we've had uh, fantastic feedback and everybody's kind of enjoying fixing broken clusters. So with that, thank you ever so much and I will see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you.